So in this problem, we're told that the acceleration function in meters per second squared and the initial velocity are given for a particle moving along a line. And so a of t is equal to t plus 6, v sub 0, or v of 0 is equal to 2, where our time is from 0 to 11 seconds. So let's just start with a. Find the velocity at time t. So basically, we need to find the velocity function. So we know that what acceleration is. It's a, or a of t, is equal to t plus 6. We gotta find the antiderivative of this. So the antiderivative of t is gonna be t, and then we add one right to its previous exponent, so t squared. Then we divide by our new exponent, so 2, plus, and then we have a constant, right? So our constant, we just um, add uh, our variable next to it, so it's gonna be 6t. So and then whenever you take the antiderivative, you have to add a constant, right? So we're gonna use that to represent that by c. So the antiderivative of t plus 6 is t squared over 2 plus 6t plus c. And then so they give us what v sub 0 is. So that's going to allow us to replace um, our c with an actual value. So v sub 0, right, so that's 2, is equal to 0 squared over 2, which is just 0, plus 6 times 0, which is 0, plus uh, c, right? So that means c is going to be equal to 2, right? So if, now we know c equals 2. So our velocity function is going to be equal to t squared uh, over 2 plus 6t plus our c, which we just found out was 2. So v of t is going to be t squared over 2 plus 6t uh, plus 2. Cool. So now what we got to do is do b. So it says find the distance traveled during the given time interval. So all we got to do is just take the integral of our velocity function for the time uh, time given. So let's set up our integral. So our lower bound is going to be 0, right? And then our upper bound is 11. And then we just put in our velocity function. So t squared over 2 plus 6t plus 2 dt. And so all we got to do is solve. So let's find the antiderivative of our velocity function. So t squared, we got to find the antiderivative of this right here. So we add one to our exponent, divide by that. And since we have a constant, we got to multiply by 1 half. So it's going to become 1 half uh, divided by 3 is 1 over 6. And then we multiply by t cubed. So 1 over 6 t cubed. And then the antiderivative of 6t, we add one. Our exponent, divide by our new exponent, multiply by our constant. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. So it's plus 3t squared. And plus uh, the antiderivative of a constant is just the constant multiplied by our variable. So plus 2t. So we're evaluating this from our lower bound and our upper bound. So 11 to 0, 0 to 11. So what we need to do is plug in 11, we'll get a value, we'll minus whatever 0 is plugged into it. So, let's start by plugging in 11. So, 1 over 6 times 11 cubed plus 3 times 11 squared plus 2 times 11. So, I'm going to start on the left side right here. So, 11 cubed is going to be 1,331 times 1 over 6 is just... Uh, 1,331 over 6 plus, so 11 squared is going to be 121 times 3 is 363. And 2 times 11 is just 22. So 363 plus 22 gives us 385. So what I'm going to do is make this to be over 6 so we can add these better. So 385 times 6 is 2,310. Make it over 6. So let's add these together. So 1,331 plus 2,310 gives us 3,641 over our denominator, so 6. So when we plug in 11, we'll get 3,641 over 6. Then we minus whatever 0 plugged in is. So if you notice when we plug in 0, it's just going to become 0 because 0 cubed is 0 times 1 over 6 is 0. All these contain t, so it's just going to go to 0. 
So we do 3,641 over 6 minus 0, it's just the same thing. So 3,641 divided by 6. So this right here is going to be the total distance traveled. Our answer to B, 3,641 divided by 6. So yeah, that's how you solve this problem.